Keen AI watchers will have seen the recent announcements at NVIDIA GTC regarding the new Bluefield 3 SuperNIC, designed specifically for cloud workloads. And many of you will be familiar with the Bluefield name in regards to NVIDIA data processing units or DPUs. So what is a SuperNIC and how does it differ from a DPU or a SmartNIC for that matter? Well, stay tuned and I'll explain. Let's start with a brief recap of server network cards so we can best understand where a super NIC fits. A traditional server NIC has the job of communicating with the network switches and passing the packets of data to the host CPU for processing. This all works fine up to around 10 gigabit network speeds. However, above this, the influx of data packets starts to impact the CPU's ability to do this and run all the other system's applications effectively. So NIC capability was enhanced to include an element of offloading so that the network traffic functions traditionally carried out by the CPU were now carried out on the NIC itself. Much like how parallel processing tasks often bypass the CPU and system memory in favor of the GPU with its own dedicated memory. This change also supported the development of faster networks, such as 25 to 100 gigabit speeds, as the CPU as a bottleneck had been removed. As speeds continued to increase past 100 gigabit per second, another degree of offloading was required, and smart NICs were developed that provided programmable offloading using technologies such as RDMA, standing for Remote Direct Memory Access for InfiniBand Connections, and ROCKY, RDMA over converged Ethernet that allow systems to communicate with less latency and higher throughput. Now, although network speeds continue to increase, it was the evolution of the software-defined hardware-accelerated technologies that drove the advent of DPUs. Applications such as software-defined storage rely on a management layer of applications that control how data is stored across virtual pools and how it can be dynamically moved between layers. Plus, things like deduplicating and compressing of data requires a degree of processing, and this has to happen somewhere. The DPU handles the RDMA Rocky offloading task, but it also processes the additional overhead of management software, and it acts like an endpoint within the server to keep the system CPU and memory free of any storage or networking tasks. Since their introduction in 2020, DPUs have gained popularity in the realm of cloud computing, primarily due to their capacity to offload, accelerate and isolate data center infrastructure processing. SuperNICs have been designed with a similar role in mind, but although DPUs and SuperNICs share a range of features and capabilities, SuperNICs are uniquely optimized for accelerating networks for AI. Some of their functions include high-speed packet reordering, maintaining the sequential integrity of the data flow, advanced congestion control using real-time telemetry data, and the ability to program I.O. to enable customization in the infrastructure of AI cloud data centers. Distributed AI training and inference communication flow depend heavily on network bandwidth availability for success. SuperNICs scale more effectively than DPUs, offering a one-to-one -one ratio between GPUs and SuperNICs within a system to significantly enhance AI workload efficiency, leading to greater productivity and superior outcomes for enterprises. As the sole purpose of the SuperNIC is to accelerate networking, they're less complex than DPUs. These reduced computing requirements translate into reduced power consumption, which may be especially important when considering systems containing up to eight SuperNICs. And it is worth mentioning that the Bluefield 3 SuperNIC only addresses the Ethernet market, along with the new NVIDIA Spectrum 4 switches. InfiniBand users get similar functionality in the Connect X8 SuperNIC, designed to work with the Quantum X800 switches. So there we have it. We hope you found this video guide to SuperNIC useful, but of course, please don't hesitate to get in touch with the SCAN AI team if you have any further questions or you want to discuss any requirements that you may have. Oh,